Good morning. I wanted to do a video before I did my paint on my RV7, or at least most of the paint. The fuselage is not finished yet because I'm still waiting on the finish kit uh, to get all that together. Uh, there's some back ordered parts, but the wings, control surfaces, and everything that you see behind me is all prepped, uh, fitted, and ready for paint. I plan to do that today uh, and over the next day or two and then uh, put it in a rack and take it to the airport because I won't need to do anything else on that. So as I walk around here, I'll just show you, I've got my uh, garage uh, set up in paint booth mode. So we've got uh, plastic on the walls and plastic with some vents all the way around. Uh, and that will keep, uh, hopefully, the overspray where it's supposed to be. But it's an old garage, so I'm not too worried about some overspray. Uh, the parts themselves, I made some racks. I'm going to turn the camera around. These racks are to hold the control surfaces. I've got ailerons and flaps on the bottom. And then I've got my empennage, which was a custom fairing that I made out of carbon fiber and the wing tips, which have been modified with the um, uh, hinge method of attachment here. So if you want to check that out, there's plenty of good videos and information. Uh, the tail surfaces, everything's going to be mounted to these two saw horses. I've got the rudder mounted already. Uh, I did close in everything. I've got just a little bit more sanding to do right here on the ends of my elevators. I'll do that this morning. Uh, finish that up. Everything that you see has been washed with some good heavy detergent and then scuffed with a red Scotch-Brite pad. Uh, that was done two days ago. And I'm gonna give everything one more uh, light scuffing with the Scotch-Brite pad this morning, and then wipe it all down with some wax and grease remover or mineral spirits, whatever you choose to use, uh, before I start spraying. The paint that I'm gonna use is a uh, epoxy uh, primer. It's uh, the uh, Ask Noble, uh, if, you, if that's how you say it properly. Uh, but I'm gonna be using a white uh, with a light reducer uh, my goal is to get or two uh, medium uh, coats on here to get uh, most coverage that I can without putting too much buildup on. I have all my uh, striping mapped out. I'll show you how I did that later uh, with some still shots. And I uh, have lots of parts and pieces, uh, things like cover plates and all my screws are screwed into a board so I can spray the board and cover all the screw heads. Those have all been prepped, uh, set and ready to go. So uh, basically I'm going to get to it. I got to finish with the shop, tape up the seams, uh, do a uh, scotch bright everything one more time and then wipe it all down. And then I'll show you some uh, painting from there. Okay, everything is scuffed. Everything is wiped clean with wax and grease remover. I've got a good etching, both mechanical and um, chemical on all surfaces. We've got everything laid out and I just misted the floor and the walls with a little bit of water, made sure I didn't get anything on the material, just to keep the dust down. Um, I did blow everything out, sweep everything out very well beforehand. So I think we're pretty much ready to start spraying. I'm gonna mix up the uh, primer, uh, the epoxy primer and start spraying. I'll take some pictures as we go. My first color of base coat is done. It's going to be a base white uh, that I have here, and I've sprayed that almost the entirety of the wing. I laid out my stripes ahead of time with some uh, tissue paper, 
It's a very simple stripe design, blue on one side, gray in the middle, white on the other, and I'll have an accent stripe in between. So the stripe is easy. I drew that out with some uh, markers on the paper, and then I just went through, since it's very thin paper, I took a uh, dry erase marker. A uh, Sharpie would work too, because we're gonna wipe it all down with alcohol when we're done, uh, and just made spots along the uh, uh, stripes, the two lines that I want. And when I pull this back, I'm left with my basic curve and the dots that you can see there. I'll follow that along with my fine line tape, in this case, just vinyl black tape. And when that's done, I'll show you what it looks like. Well, the painting is done and I am a mess, but we're looking pretty good actually. I'll turn the camera around here and show you what we're getting at. Uh, this wing, striping job, everything came out nice. No real problems there. I've got uh, two and a half, uh, two thick coats or three thin coats of clear on. Uh, this one, had a little bit of overspray in the blue right in here, uh, and a moth actually landed on the top side. So I'm gonna have to respray some of this. I locked it down with a um, uh, clear coat just to hold it. Um, and I'm gonna let that dry for a couple days, then I'll color sand it and just respray the white uh, clear coat over top of that, and it should be done. Uh, the blue really came out nice. I was very pleased with the blue parts and pieces all along here. These are the elevators. Uh, they came out nice. I was pleased with that. Striping worked out good. Here's the wing tips. Uh, nice shine to them. We'll have to see what, how things look once they dry. Uh, I'm hoping that I won't have to do too much uh, uh, wet sanding or buffing at this point. But uh, the temperature's pretty good in here. The, uh, uh, the shop set up pretty well. Um, other than overspray issues, which you're gonna have in an enclosed area like this, it's not a professional booth. But I'm pretty pleased with the way it came out. It was a long day, I need to clean up. Welcome back. Uh, the painting's all done. I'm cleaned up and so is the airplane. Uh, I'm overall, I'm pleased with the results that I got in my garage. With my spray job, I did have to color sand. There's a couple uh, taping mistakes that I had to go back, retape, sand, respray, and then re-clear. So I fixed things along the way. Uh, all in all, I have about 25 hours start to finish on the paint that I've got, which is wings, all the tail surfaces, flaps, ailerons, fairings, uh, screw heads, different things like that. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. Yours may go faster, yours may go slower. I did have to redo some things, but overall I'm pleased with where I'm at now. Um, I will go through and do a little bit of color sanding on uh, all their aerofoil surfaces and anything else that I think might need it. Uh, a couple things that I learned, I wanted to make sure that I got out to everybody. I was really concerned about um, putting the paint on too heavy and getting runs, sags and things that you've read about, I'm sure, or watched videos on. Um, and I've painted cars in the past where that has been an issue, especially with the clear coat. Uh, it just seems to, when I get it wet the way I think it should be, I walk away and five minutes later I look and there's runs. I shouldn't have been that concerned with that because my first 
um, coat of clear coat, my first two coats, uh, the first time I clear coated anything, I put on too dry. Uh, and I was moving too fast with the spray gun back and forth. It was getting glossy while it was wet, but everything wasn't gelling together, if you will. If you think about it, you're really spraying on a plastic coating on top of the paint with a clear. Um, and it needs to be uh, molded together. The little droplets can't stay little droplets. So if your shop temperature is warm, it's going to have to go on a little heavier. If it's cooler, you don't want to go on so heavy. And I, I needed to think that out and actually just do it. I got much, much better as time went on. Go a little slower with the gun and I could see uh, the wet edge that they call it and uh, it laid down and it's very, it's nice it's very smooth uh, where it's at now still a little bit of sanding to do to get it perfect but that's fine that's what it's all about don't be so concerned about the runs I was worried about the runs I sprayed too dry runs really aren't that big of a deal as long as it's not over the whole work you'll find a little bit on a vertical surface you uh, uh, had the gun going a little too slow, got a little heavy in one area. Uh, runs can be sanded out. It's not that big of a deal. I'm going to end up sanding most of this clear coat anyway uh, with a light hand sand and then a uh, buffer with either probably two or three phases of buffing compound to get everything perfect and shiny and beautiful anyway. So a little run here or there is not that big of a deal. And I did get um, one or two runs on some of my vertical surfaces in the uh, aileron behind me. And it was only because uh, I didn't have my lighting quite right and I was going a little slow with the gun. I saw it when it happened, moved on and went from there. That's the only run that I actually really got in the clear. Uh, the base coat, you're not going to have any problems with runs. It goes on dry, um, sticks well, and dries fast. Uh, if you get runs in the base coat, something's wrong with your gun. Um, it's not a technique issue. That is just heavy stuff. The epoxy primer that I put on, you saw pictures. I did get some runs in that, and that's what got me started on this. Oh my goodness, I'm very concerned about uh, you know going fast with the gun and trying to lay it out, maybe multiple coats. And I thought if I put three or four thin coats on, I get the same that I would with two heavier coats, and that's not the case, especially with the clear. Put the clear on, you want it to be wet, you want it to go down solid. My wings and most of my surfaces are on a rotisserie, so I can lay them flat, um, and I think that that helps a lot when you're an amateur painter. Vertical surfaces, you got to be just so, because the paint will sag, it will run. Horizontal surfaces, the paint tends to lay down. I got a much smoother finish on my horizontal surfaces. So if you can paint your big surfaces horizontal, please do so. Uh, that's going to be difficult when it comes to the fuselage because there'll be a lot of up underneath, around compound curves and stuff. But now I feel that I can handle it a lot better because I did these surfaces first. So all in all, I'm pleased with it. I hope the video helps you out. Go to it. You can do this. Um, it's a lot of time and uh, paint is not cheap, so it's not something that you want to be playing with a whole lot beforehand, uh, but do practice beforehand just with your gun techniques, looking at that wet, put on too much on a vertical surface of cardboard or something cheap and watch it sag, see what it looks like before you try and do it uh, on your expensive project. Thanks. Good luck. I uh, hope the video helped out. Bye.